Hey, it's Ashley from Westcott, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a shoot where I took my studio outside. So before I get into the explanation, if you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on bell notifications. That way you can be the first to know when we post new videos. For the shoot, I was inspired by several different photo shoots I've seen, where a studio set is filled with flowers. And I've always wanted to do a shoot like this, but I know it takes a lot of time and resources to pull it off. So I decided to get a little creative and bring the studio outside. This way, I could still have that studio look with a background and controlled lighting, while still having the foreground and bottom of the scene filled with flowers and greenery. To me, the first step to every shoot is pre-planning. And the first thing I do when starting to plan a shoot is to come up with a concept. I knew I wanted to bring the studio outside to get almost a hybrid photo of studio and on location. So I knew I wanted to put up a background. So the first thing I did is I went through what backgrounds I had and chose Westcott's 8x8 parchment paper. With this background, I was picturing a lot of neutral earth tones, with the primary color scheme in the photo being green, white, and a lot of cream colors. With this concept in mind, the next step was finding a location and I found the perfect spot at a local metro park. When planning for a shoot on location, I always try to scout the location a few days before the shoot, even if it's a location I've been to before. This way I can make sure that nothing is under construction, see what kind of flowers are in bloom, and just make sure nothing has changed that would affect the shoot. I find that this is a very important step to every shoot, especially the ones where I don't have a lot of time to think of a new plan. I knew with bringing the studio outside, I was gonna have to carry a lot of gear with me. So finding a spot I could easily travel to was important. Pre-planning every photo shoot allows me to focus on capturing the photos instead of worrying about the small details. That way I can focus on what matters during the shoot. Once I got on location the day of the shoot, I began setting up my gear. For the background, I used Westcott's X-Drop Pro Background System. This is a robust yet portable background system that allows me to mount 8x8 backgrounds. On the day of the shoot, it was a little bit windy, so I wanted to make sure to secure my background to help ensure that I didn't fall on my subject. For this, I use Westcott's H2 Pro water bags to help weigh the frame down. This is great for on-location shoots. Since you can fill it with water instead of sand, you can easily fill it up at the location instead of carrying all that weight with you. For lighting, I use two FJ400 strobes. And for the main light, I modified my strobe with an Apollo Orb, which is a 43-inch umbrella-style softbox. I also added a second light modifier with an Apollo 1x3 strip, just to add a little edge light to my subject. This will help add some dimension to the image and give my model a backlit look when working outside. When it came to the day of the shoot, it was a very sunny day. And due to the available flowers and the direction the wind was blowing, I had to shoot where the light was not very flattering on my subject's face. I knew for this shot, I wanted some ambient light coming in to help light up the background and the flowers in the foreground. So overpowering the sun just would not give me the look I was aiming for. So I had to find a way to work with the existing light, even if it was unflattering. To fix this, I used one of my favorite on-location lighting tricks and used my main light to block the sun from hitting my subject's face. This blocks all the direct light from hitting my subject's face and gives me an evenly lit ambient exposure. That way I can control what the light looks using my strobe. In fact, because of the limited size, I was actually getting a bit of light spill on the bottom of my model's dress and on her shoulder. For the shoot, I actually kind of liked how this looked in the scene, so I used the light spill as a natural second rim light and made sure to communicate with my model and let her know when she needed to move back or forward to make sure no harsh light was hitting her face while still getting a bit of that extra rim light. Another challenge with using my main light to block the sun was the placement of my light. Since I had to be in a certain spot to block the sun, it was very directional and it wasn't the most ideal placement for what I was aiming for. Since I was not able to move the light itself, I instructed my model to pose towards the light. When working with directional light, I will often have my model aim towards the light source. That way, the light will be a lot more flattering. For example, with this photo, the light was camera right on my model. So I knew if she was posing towards the left, away from the light, the light would not be hitting her face. Instead, it would be light in the back of her head. So I made sure to tell her that when posing, try to keep her head in the direction of the light and go no further than looking straight at the camera. This gives my model a range to work within. That way, they still feel free to move around and pose as they wish. Using your modifier to block the sun is a very useful technique to know, especially when shooting in areas where shade just isn't possible. Another way you can deal with unflattering sun is to use a diffusion panel to diffuse the direct light. This allows you to move your strobe wherever you need it, but it also will require an extra stand or an assistant to hold it, which I just didn't have for the shoot. For the shoot, having versatile gear ended up being key to the success of the shoot. 
Having a portable background system allowed me to get some unique portraits on location that traditionally would have been taken in studio. Another key part of the shoot was being able to use my light modifier to block the sun, in addition to softening the light from my strobe. What are some of your favorite on-location lighting tips? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.